Okay, we're taking a look at the Scottish island of Erin. And it's very far away from where I am right now. But not too far from my past. Let's look into what they found here. For they have found over 1,000 ancient sites revealed by aerial scan or LIDAR of Scotland's Erin Island. Archaeologists in Scotland concluded a cutting-edge archaeological project which was revealed around 1,000 previously unknown archaeological sites on the island of Erin alone. There is an island off the coast of Scotland which contains some of Northern Europe's most spectacular standing stones, megalithic tombs, and ruins of ancient farming communities going back around 6,000 years. I'm not talking about Orkney or Shetland Islands that people are familiar with, but another magical island, only a short ferry crossing from Glasgow and Scotland's west coast, which according to an Island Review article is more famous for its moors and its mountains, arts and crafts, beer and whiskey, than for its glorious prehistoric archaeology. That may be about to change, though. I'm, of course, speaking about the Isle of Arran in the Firth of Clyde, where archaeologists from the Historical Environmental Scotland, or HES, recently flew airborne laser scanning or LIDAR devices over the island's surface to generate a 3D image of prehistoric settlements, medieval farmsteads, and even a Neolithic monument, which the BBC called an exceptional rare find. Now here's one photo or image they've captured from the area superimposed on the river and you can see that there's a huge crop circle or a stone hinge type area that's built here right on a river that's leading to the ocean. But also in this site there are circles in a few places like here, like here, like here that aren't really showing up Oh, and up here in the edges. And if you keep looking, you'll find some objects. And, of course, they have to be in, uh, investigated more. But what they've done here, apparently, now I'm not totally in the know of this, was they uh, took the LiDAR imaging of the ground and knowing that it's going to get bounces off of a lot of things that are just above the soil and bushes and trees and so on, and using it in dual fashion out the side of each of the wings going over something like this they kind of get dual points of data on a certain point of land so far from the plane blah 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 and in doing so it paints what actually is the ground and they can tell okay well here's this crap up and down up and down but this is the ground right and they can in a way taken squelch out or silence all of that clutter that's external that's oddities and then all of a sudden it reveals a landscape as if you were to just take all the foliage off of it totally right and in doing so it exposes a lot of places they've used this exact same technology in uh, the South American jungle and repeated flyovers and now have seen some of the sites they have there, the ancient Aztec and Mayas that are incredibly huge, that are all swallowed up by the jungle now. But this is just swallowed up by time, dirt, and a little bit of foliage. And one only has to walk out across it, but it's odd whenever you walk out to it because it's mainly submerged under soil and such that you wouldn't even notice it except for a hump. And some of these are so large in size that someone isn't going to notice, oh, well, there's a circle, until you know that you're looking for them. That's the remains of a hut circle that they're talking about. LIDAR and the rise of rapid archaeology. The LIDAR data is available from the Scottish Government Remote Sensing Portal and survey results are available now on Canmore, Scotland's national re record of the historic environment. It was the largest survey of its type 
that has ever been conducted, but I can only imagine they're about to do quite a few more. For it's kind of like in the Hubble Space Telescope whenever they shot out in the middle of nowhere to see what they might find, it ended up being the most clustered picture that we have of the universe, and it's just incredible. And things that you find that you never knew. Let's see if the video can play here. So this is some of the data that's shown here and which ones they've found. Uh, they have different markers for the magenta, the blue, and the yellow that are on here, but it shows literally thousands of them on there. And they're designated by being either a roundhouse, a shielding, which a shielding is a corral for animals and kind of a protection for animals while you're um, raising them and stuff. And it showed that they were raising goats and stuff at a very early time. They haven't even started digs on this. Well, now they have, but the reported point is that they haven't actually even put it out yet or anything. The man that speaks here is uh, really getting uh, too much in depth, talking about small little concepts and features and how much per trained pixels they have of each thing. But you can see how they are able to gr glean a 3D image and they can use different filters on it and in doing so get quite a different look. But also some of these things show up quite well. And they've been able to use this filtering material and come up with different pictures uh, that'll show you quite a bit of objects. And so they show you that they have this going on here. And amazingly, all these sites pop up hot instantly that you see here. But you'll see that there's a circle here. And for some reason, it didn't pop up hot. Well, that's because there's lines run through it and so on. And there are images here, and even a circle in this man's field, and quite a few places. But, so they have, now they've mapped them out as being the different things, and here we see the yellows, the blues, and the magentas that they're using. Notice that this farmland down here is quite uniquely built. Huge tracks. And they have to go through and filter through sites. There are ones like this that they say was not detected. Not detected. Right? And yet they found it. But what they're looking at is something like this. And can you believe it's a giant circle that's out there? Here's another view of another one, which from the ground looks like this. And you can see a 90 degree angle and a circle and yet when you look out here there's just a hump because there's tufts of grass growing up that are almost the same size this cattle crawl that's here no wait it's this giant circle that's here it goes around some of these sites show up odd and they say this one may be fake for it's not showing the same and their image looks just like a blotch and there's a couple of them right near each other and because it doesn't show this humping maybe it's not there other sites are showing prime interest like this that even in its structure shows something very rectangular and stones being put into it and this is what's left out there that they don't really know if it means anything but bands and circles and raised areas and so you can see that short of being able What's amazing is the LIDAR is able to look through this and tell that there's a whole roundhouse that's right here. That it basically is like if you were to scorch instantly off all the ground clutter and see what's actually there. Now, they have that ground penetrating radar that they can use and so on, but it's believed that they're going to easily find right at the surface by taking off this top layer stonework right there and then we'd start their excavation from there of course and uh, so it's amazing technology that's able to show something that's you know that we never knew that we never knew was there and just like fly, you know flying over the uh, Nazca desert and no one knew that was there till somebody flew over it and so it appears to be made for someone else 
for someone that's watching things like this or that's looking and people have made a lot of commentary on that but uh, this area of Iran is quite neat all the different things that is showing up and a myriad of different sites here all connected not even giant farming communities but little hutlets and what you would consolidate as being a whole village area of people concentrated in this area but yet laying out and it seems to be they're attached to a lot of the rivers that are around it and things like that and uh, he goes on to a lot more data and just really talks about his lidar and things and how it works and takes out the scattering of things and I think there's a whole article set that's on it and what they're doing with the software able to render a better 3D ground environment taking out all of the scatter and the back shot that they get. Dave Crowley, Rapid Archaeologist Mapping Manager at Historic Environment Scotland, or HES, said that he's shown scientists that there are double the number of ancient monuments on the Isle of Oran than they had previously known about, and Scottish heritage leaders say tens of thousands of further sites might be found using the scanning technology. Now, people are probably going to go crazy on that, but they're only looked at one part of this small island of Island of Iran. And if they were to take it and go across other islands and other, you know, places, much more inland and other places too, they're probably going to find much more. And one would also wonder what they could find right offshore, submerged now from where people used to live near the shore in ancient times. Galley also told reporters that the new 3D technology allowed for a rapid archaeology survey conducted over weeks rather than months or years and that it also allowed the discovery of sites that might even have been impossible to find just walking on foot, as you can probably see from the pictures. Among the structures identified from the air are medieval and post-medieval uh, shieldings, which are circular stone structures which sheltered sheep from the winds and so on, which detail how upland areas were used by shepherds. And here you can see part of the data that they can pull out of this, and right near that river that we were looking at, and all of these different crawls that are there, multi-ringed and hutted are actual domiciles it looks like. And what each one is for each. And you can see one there, and you can see one there. And you can see them at the top and around. And they're basically all over the places. But there's a cluster of three right here that aren't really standouts. But you wonder if that has something to do with something. I think it's quite amazing. Furthermore, archaeologists identified a magnificent medieval roundhouse, a type of circular wooden home with a conical roof. Furthermore, archaeologists identified a magnificent medieval roundhouse, a type of circular wooden home with a conical roof that was built in Britain from the Bronze Age through the Iron Age and into the medieval periods. Metho Mesolithic pitch stone traders. This is somewhat like onyx stone. Somewhat like flint. The Isle of Arran is the largest island in the Firth of Clyde and is the seventh largest Scottish island. It is often referred to as a geologist's paradise and as far back as the Neolithic, the early Bronze Age pitch stone from the Isle of Arran were transported around Britain. According to a study published on ResearchGate, worked our own pitch stone from radiocarbon dated pits indicated that on the Scottish mainland, all archaeological pitch stone derives from outcrops on the Isle of Arran. So apparently it was the hub. And on the island, pitch stone bearing assemblages include diagnostic types from the uh, Mesolithic that was traded extensively throughout Britain during the early Neolithic period. And here's some of the examples that they have of cuts and smaller pieces and microblades. The Isle of Iran and ancient spiritual centers. On Iran, arche archaeologists find a type of burial structure classified as Neolithic Clyde Cairn. It's got its own little flavor to it, which are stone and earth mounds enclosed 
a chamber lined with larger stone slabs. They are thought to have been used for public community rituals. Several Bronze Age sites have been excavated, and the monastery of Ilik, as founded by St. Brendan in the 6th century, with the nearby Holly Isle being a center of his spiritual activities. And isn't he the one famed for having come to the Americas in elder times? Holy Isle has a long history as a sacred site of pilgrimage with its healing holy well. A 6th century monk, St. Molasses, Hermit's Cave, Molase is Hermit Cave, and a 13th century monastery. LIDAR is unveiling of quite a few more sites too as we'll have some videos coming up. Today the island is owned by the Samye Ling Buddhist community who belong to the Kagyu school of Tibetan Buddhism. That's odd. And settlements on the island include the Center for World Peace and Health. Almost sounds like a United Nations directive things, but with its solar water heating and reed bed sewage treatment system. Oh, so they're trying to be very green about things. Um, that's, that's great. It's amazing. Uh, and here it shows some of the land. And look at that great golf-looking grass that you could use for a golf store. But, man, off in the distance in the countryside. And you wonder what they could find there. Now, these are some of the uh, uh, soy-up sheep that they have there. And uh, those are also some of the uh, stupas that they have for the local Buddhist. LiDAR technology is quickly building a new picture of Scotland's historic environment. And the new study on Iran uh, is another step as the aerial scanning technology becomes more widely available. And... If the scientists' speculations are right and the tens of thousands of more ancient sites are there and they're discovered across the rest of Scotland, a whole new generation of archaeology and archaeologists will be attracted to the highlands of Scotland. And so while... While Iran Island is showing all of these sites, there also is the sites that are showing off the Isle of Wight in Ireland itself and even in mainlands and so on. And uh, it really shows that there are a lot of connections. And it's not that far away. People should check it out.